so I'm Alexandra Curzon and I'm the creator of Hidden Heroines, the untold stories of women of the dockyard. This exhibition aims to tell the untold stories of women of the dockyard. Um, we've worked to uncover some amazing stories of the first women who worked here, the women that went to sea living on board warships, women that helped in battles actually, which people don't realise went on. Um, we also talk about the women um, who helped the war effort and then those, those that really changed, kind of paved the way and had that lasting legacy for women today. So the first section of the exhibition focuses on the first official women that worked at the dockyard. There were six sadly unnamed women that started work sewing the bunting from the Warton fleet returning from the French Revolutionary Wars um, into new signal flags. And these six women proved themselves. They were deemed unproblematic and nimble-fingered. Um, which is ridiculous, um, but after they this kind of shown how good they were at being able to work, all the Royal Dockyards um, in England were asked to follow their lead, and then soon we had the ladies of the Ropery, and they were the next official workers at the Ropery, and they started in 1864. The next section talks about the women at home, and this was the hardest section to research. I knew women lived here, we knew people worked here as maids, but we knew nothing about them. And so what we had to do is go back right to the censuses and we managed to find from 1841 to 1911, 250 um, domestic servants that actually worked here. For the wives, we've had to find those personal recollections and we feature two women there. We've got um, Elizabeth Proby, who was in the 18th century daughter of the commissioner that lived in our commissioner's house and married a Russian admiral, went off to have a glamorous life in St. Petersburg and Lady Poor who was um, an admiral's wife at the outbreak of the First World War. The third section is Women at Sea and this is where we explore the wives that bravely lived with their husbands. Romantically described that they couldn't part with them for love but it's more for practical reasons. Uh, the women that helped in battle on the warships. We also cover the unofficial most unofficial role of women with the Royal Navy, which is the prostitutes. Um, really interesting stories about these 500 prostitutes being shipped out to stop mutinies on ships. Um, and then the 20 women in disguise, um, dressed up as men, um, to serve in the Royal Navy. The next section is focusing on the women at war. So even though the dockyard uh, workers was a reserved occupation, a lot of them felt the social pressure and went off to fight and 2,000 women were employed to, to enable this. And they were incredible. In the First World War alone, they built 12 ships and submarines and they're involved with all the roles of the refitting and servicing of damaging, damaged ships that were coming back after um, being hit by torpedoes. The next section we focus on women in service. Um, and this is really interesting because often in previous hundreds of years, women would unofficially be supporting military campaigns. Um, but in 1915, the suffragettes marched to London and said that we want to take on more of a role. And that's where we had the first uh, military services for women set up. And their work was, was land-based to enable men to go off and fight. And in particular, the Wrens is obviously very key to the Chatham Dockyard story and we feature a timeline of their amazing stories and actually by the end of World War II, there were 75,000 of them. The second but last section is the women post-war and this is where women had proved themselves um, during the war years and they didn't want to lose this independence and they took on a number of roles supporting the dockyard. Um, but actually in 1970 we see the, pass, um, the passing of the Equal Pay Act in 1975, the Sex Discrimination Act and it's really interesting to explore how these women took on more roles at the dockyard. They started at their segregated positions as tracers and cleaners and secretaries and canteen workers um, and then we feature the first female apprentice Sandra Bradley who joined in the 1970s and it's really interesting to see how how roles of the women developed to where we are today. My name's Linda Brown and when I was working in the dockyard when it was a working dockyard I was an administration officer Oh, there were so many experiences. It, it was just a, a lovely place to work. In the 1970s, there was a lot of uh, security because of the IRA, um, and everybody was in 
told to be extremely careful and observant and cautious and uh, I can remember one particular occasion I'd come into the office and the head messenger had warned me not to touch the envelope on my desk because it was just a little regular sized envelope but there was what appeared to be a bolt in the corner so we had to evacuate the offices from the back up to the front and we had to open all the windows and the bomb disposal squad came um, the chap came in his complete outfit, full visor, and uh, carried this envelope at arm's length. I don't quite know what arm's length would have done if it had gone off, but um, out to the helipad. And they warned us that they were going to detonate it. Well, there was an enormous blast. And of course, we thought, yes, that must have been a bomb. But it wasn't. It was just the detonation. It was so loud. Um, and he brought it back in, and this bolt feature that was in the envelope actually turned out to be about 30 paper clips, one on top of the other, with different invoices. So I had great pleasure in uh, ringing up the lady who sent them to us and asked her to resubmit them all again because they'd been blown up. But it was a great place because everybody joined in together and we were a team even in those days you know as far as I could see right the way across the yard it was it was a great atmosphere so there are lots of memories but that's probably my most dramatic one <laughs> which brings us nicely on to our last section which really features on the women that work here now the dockyard closed in 1984 but we have a strong female workforce still today um, and we feature this at the end of the exhibition and kind of showcase how actually this was an exhibition created by women as well which is a really exciting part of this story. My name is Leanne Clark and I'm a master rope maker. I have worked at the historic dockyard for 11 years, nine of those being in the ropery. Um, I absolutely love working here because it's got such a tight sense of community as well as just the history seeped in the entire place. Um, my job personally entails making rope to order and making products out of rope as well. So we make everything from magnets to mooring lines. Being the only female rope maker can used to have its downfalls when I first started in that I wasn't physically strong enough to do some of the jobs, but I've since bulked up a bit and learned how to do things my way. Um, but otherwise the guys just kind of treat me as a rope maker and as one of the team. To make rope, you start off with the individual yarn which is then twisted into the strands and three strands then make a rope. To determine the size of the rope, the less yarns you put in, the smaller the rope, the more yarns you put in, the bigger the rope. And we make everything from five mil all the way up to 110 mil. I feel like the Hidden Heroines exhibition is so important because the history, naval history in general, tends to focus a lot on the male roles and the women get sort of sidelined but the female roles were just as important, if not more important in some respects, and they just kind of get a bit of a backbench, and I feel like it really needs to come to light what the women did in history. We also have a touring exhibition that will be going around to local schools and libraries with outreach sessions, and we're never going to lose this research. We've got it now, and there'll be a digital exhibition that, that continues beyond the life of the exhibition. But what also has been an amazing opportunity to, is to collect new images and oral histories that will remain in our archive and protected for future generations. Now we've got women doing just about every job you could imagine that they needed and wanted to do in the dockyard. I can't think of any jobs that they wouldn't be capable of doing and I think it's important to reflect the acceptance of women in society and in society in the dockyard. The community has changed over the years that uh, it is very unisex now and I think that's a great thing because women do do a good job and I think we should celebrate that.